Greetings, you lovely definitions of insanity, watching these videos time and time again, expecting me to change. And welcome back to Stellaris with me, Lathrix, and of course, welcome to my favourite build yet again, now trying it out in the new DLC. So right now, I'm halfway through doing the full playthrough of the Under One Rule Origin, using the All Crisis type, and that is taking a very, very long time. It is very in-depth, and it's one of my favourite videos I've been recording for a while, but I really do want a video on the channel, so this is something which I think is actually going to be pretty decent now. Well, at least viable. Viable is all I ask for. For those who are new to the channel, I absolutely love the Angular Civic. I don't think it's good, but I absolutely adore the theme of it. I love the idea of it. I just think it's really fun to play around with. And coupling this with Agrarian Ideal, supercharging your farmers, allowing your agricultural districts to give you building slots and amenities and all that other good stuff, I just love the idea of these farmers taking over the entire galaxy through the power of fishing rather than actual farming but it has never really been as good as the alternatives. Well, now we have the governors, and these lovely council positions will give us additional food, additional consumer goods from the anglers and pearl divers, even more food from Agrarian Ideal, and now you can super speedrun getting your third civic, and that is the biggest change for me. That means you can really quickly get catalytic processing, which means your food becomes alloys, and you can get that incredibly quickly if you build towards it. So, I honestly think Anglers could be one of the best super aggressive very, very early game builds, or at least a viable alternative to the other aggressive builds. I want my ships made out of food, destroying other empires, collecting more food, and everyone to have full bellies and to be happy. And is that so much to ask? So what we're going with is pacifist, fanatic authoritarian for loads more worker output, but also the extra influence is fantastic there. We're going with imperial because of the capital system effects of plus 10% resources from jobs, so our homeworld get even more resources. We're going with ocean paradise for a super ocean world to begin with, for us to fish to our heart's content. Obviously, anglers and agrarian ideal. Our people are aquatic and agrarian, so loads of extra food, and they are also quick learners because I want those counselors to level up nice and quickly. So extra food and consumer goods, extra food, and then even more extra food. We should be swimming in food by the very end of it. It should just be a miracle situation with the amount of food we should be able to produce. And that's just about it. Now, as for our main leader... Honestly, I'm just thinking I for talent. Let's just go with extra experience gain for all of our leaders. As for our difficulty, the usual settings apply. We're not going to go to the end game, so the crisis type doesn't really matter. We'll be playing probably the first hundred or so years just to see if this can actually work. And I won't be hard resetting for the precursor either. The Gaia World precursor is obviously the best for this build because that can supercharge your farmers even more later on. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to see how it works with what we're going with. So, let's begin and let's do some fishing. Hey everyone, Future Lathrix here to just quickly say two things. First of all, throughout this entire video, I reference a lot that I wanted to go down the route of the Arcology Project purely because, well, it would work out so well with so much food being generated, and then of course the alloys being produced from food, you want some super forge worlds. Sadly, Agrarian Ideal locks you out of this option. You cannot have Arcology Project and Agrarian Ideal at the same time, Although I guess you could unlock one then the other. Anyway, it just doesn't work out. So because of that, I do play a little bit more erratically towards the end. So if you're going to do this build, perhaps instead go down the route of ring worlds or something else to spend all of that influence. Because you can have lots of food, which makes alloys essentially free to produce. So need a lot more forge worlds. And lastly, before we get back into the video itself, and this is something people have suggested of me for a very long time and something I would love some feedback on, in the next few weeks, or at least in the not-so-distant future, I am going to be opening up a Patreon. So this is just the perfect time for me, honestly. It's not something I've ever been super comfortable with, but I'm currently in the process of buying the house I'm currently renting, in addition to loads of other stuff, and it is something which just makes complete logical sense, but I have just never been 100% comfortable with, so I would love some feedback if it is something you would be welcome to hear every now and again, and what kind of rewards would you like to see from that kind of Patreon if you would consider subscribing there and supporting the channel. At the moment, the main thing is going to be reading out the names of the Patreons at the end of the videos, in addition to all of the usual stuff you see on YouTube, but if there is anything you would like to see, then of course in the comments I would love to hear it. So now, finally back to the video itself, of course all that kind of stuff will not be affecting my overall schedule or anything else, it's just something worth mentioning. Now, back to the past. 
to farm way too much. And so here we begin to the left of the galactic center. So all we're doing to begin with is an extreme level of expansion. Because we are regular pacifists, this means we're not going to be able to make claims very easily. But bear in mind, we're not really going to be acting very pacifist. We can still attack to make vassals, to make tributaries, or simply to steal populations once we grab a nihilistic acquisition, which will be either the first or the second ascension perk we pick. We're likely, though, going to start off with, if I can actually find the darn thing... Where is the darn thing? Hello, darn thing, where are you? There we go. Transcendent learning. Extra leader capacity, extra experience gain. I also want to go with hydrocentric, which will further impro improve our powers on ocean worlds. And of course, we want to terraform every world into an ocean world eventually. That's all the major plans. Now, to begin with, our economy is actually absolutely fantastic, to be honest. Loads of alloys coming in, absolutely ridiculous amounts of consumer goods, loads of food, a decent amount of energy. Now, one thing you could do is change authoritarian into xenophile. Now, this means you would lose some of your actual food, but get more trade value bo from both your anglers and your pearl divers. We're going to end up with hundreds of these jobs, each of which gives you about as much... I think as much trade value as the old clerks, because clerks give more trade value now, don't they? So... It's still a lot. It's a lot which will add up, and energy is always worthwhile. Now we've got a brand new scientist in the form of our prince, who I've simply called Little Fish. Our leader has leveled up, and we're going to just keep on going with Eye for Talent. Now, the traits we really want are things like Fertility Preacher. This will increase our population growth speed, but also... Ooh, I kind of want you. But also, it will increase our food which obviously is really, really nice. I am tempted right now to swap out our Minister of Defense a bit early, although they are intolerant, which is kind of a shame. It won't really matter too much with our empire. I for talent, on the other hand, is a big deal. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to replace you as well. And our old leader is simply being removed from everything. Doing this early on can really help out if you find some of the traits you want. So now we're getting an extra 10% leader experience gain across the board. Our head of research has leveled up, and I for talent again. So every one of our council members has an I for talent. That's a lot of extra experience. I mean, it isn't quite what I wanted with um, Fertility Preacher, but it will do. There we go, Statecraft is finished, and we're going to be grabbing Transcendent Learning. So we get two extra leader capacity, which is great, because I already want a new scientist. And in addition to that, of course we now have our new Civic. So as soon as we have enough Unity, which really isn't all that much, we're going to be grabbing Catalytic Processing, which is going to help out so much because suddenly food means everything. We grow because we don't use minerals anymore for alloys, we only use food. Well, no ocean world, sadly, but at least we found two tropical worlds. So for those who don't know, this origin, Ocean Paradise, actually removes your guaranteed habitable worlds, well, changes them into frozen worlds. At least that's what it says, so... Um, I'm not sure where the frozen worlds actually are, but still, I think you can terraform them later. But on the upside, we have found two tropicals, although we have found two of our neighbours, I believe. Have they already gra- ah, oh no, they haven't grabbed the system yet. Okay, I really do want that because any nebula space is always good, free gas, free minerals, lots of happiness. We have our first factions. I'm probably not going to go with the oppressive subjugation policy, honestly, but this is really good because... Obviously, extra unity, always good. But our main leader, the best fisher, is now a politician, which means more faction approval in addition to extra, extra councillor speed. And with that, we can launch our first agenda, giving us an additional seat at the table. So the first one I'm going to want probably is the Minister of the Seas. So 5% food, 5% food, and this is the blank amount of extra food and consumer goods from our Pearl Divers. And our governor can instantly go there. Uh, sadly, no decent roles here, and no one I can hire which has any decent roles. But for now, let's go there. They're rank 3, which means we're getting 0 0.9 extra food from our anglers, and 0 0.6 extra consumer goods from our Pearl Divers. That's, of course, before any other modifier is added. And I would like favoured society to try and improve resources on the home world as well. So how much food am I now producing anyway? So this is before any of the buildings. Almost 20 food each already. That's actually better than I expected. 20 food per job. I'm okay with that. 
And then consumer goods from our Pearl Diver still probably won't be too fantastic. I mean, 9.1 is okay. It's not, it's still nowhere near as good as Masterful Crafters, but it's something. Ooh. Oh, they haven't grabbed the system yet. Please survey as fast as you can. I really want this nebula. Hello there, how are you doing? Okay, so, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get the nebula, but it looks like I may have stole... No, it probably wasn't their guaranteed habitable. They're on a relic world, so I don't know what world they're meant to be on, but either way, that's great. They are super weak! Why are you so weak? I knew our start was good, but that is very surprising. Why are you open to vassalization straight away? What's going on there? I mean, I, I guess I have been focusing on my fleet a little bit, but still... Yeah, you are really weak. That might be a, um, a pre-FDL that's woke up. Their empire looks teeny. I mean, I'm still very surprised even then, but yeah. Okay, so there's another alien species over here, I think. Oh, no, is it just you? Oh, was it just you twice? Oh. In which case, what we should probably do is get here. That way we can go past you. Then this is free to um, expand into later. Okie dokes. That's what we're going to do. Shame we didn't get this nebula in time. Again, more nebulas are great because of the lovely building of nebula refinery. Normally, I'd also rush the food building, but since we have so much food, I don't really care about that this run. I mean, obviously, I should vassalize it. Yeah, inferior economy, p um, p uh, pathetic fleet power. I really think this was a, a pre-FDL that woke up. So, I want them to be loyal. Uh, what do I want them to be? For now, let's just get them as a vassal. Make them nice and happy. Pay me a little bit of resource, that's fine. And, um... Did they just close their borders before accept- Oh yeah, look how tiny they are, they definitely woke up. Otherwise I don't know what's going on there. A new colonial outpost. Yeah, and they have no other worlds, which means... Yeah, tropical and desert there. It's a good chance they didn't get the guaranteed habitable. Okay, okay, uh, I want you to do this instead. I want to be able to move around them. Actually, if you just grab that, we could jump into that, that nebula. So, don't do that. Move here. I want to grab this nebula, and let's see if we can go this way. Really need to start doing monthly trades at this point, honestly. I've been mostly just bu um, buying all of my alloys, so that definitely makes it worthwhile. And we definitely need at least one more starport, because we've now got the tech, or at least we're now researching the tech, in order to get rare leaders. Our head of research is leveled up, so of course, extra research speed, please. Yeah, they're still not expanding. That's the first time I've seen the deconstruction ship move. So, there's something going on with that empire, and of course, that's good for us. There we go. New recruitment office, and we're going down the route of prosperity now, just to make sure our economy is good, which it is. Look at how many consumer goods we're producing. It is just absurd how much we can sell that for as well. In fact, yep, auto trade really needs to happen at this point. One of the best things about being authoritarian pacifist is the combo of peace festivals and information quarantine. Extra stability, extra happiness, your worlds are really stable. Yet somehow I always forget to turn them on. I've only just now turned them on. I'm a special kind of player. One with apparently memory loss. So I never choose this option, but I am this time. So at level 4, you get the extra bonus here. For instance, this one has become a researcher, increasing research speed if they're a counsellor. And our governor here has now got Pioneer, the one I never choose. So with the Pioneer trait, it's a little bit of extra population growth, which is okay on, on the planet they're currently living on. But also 50% extra experience gain on top of everything else. The reason for this is when they hit level 8, they get a more powerful extra super bonus, one of the destiny traits. So what if I tried to rush more level 8 leaders before the 100 years are up? Would that be good? Well, that is some good luck. We just had the missing orbitals, which means nearby there's the special system, which will give us a size 30 Gaia world, or something ridiculous like that, in the future. We also have some neighbors over here. Now, they are strong enough for us to not instantly vassalize them or anything else, so that's just the way it's going to be. So, yeah, I have no idea why our neighbors here were just so weak, because clearly the other empires are doing fine, so my pre-FDL theory is still on the table, or just they got unlucky, I'm not too sure. Also, this nebula is ridiculous. We have a new world here as well, which is also in the, ne in the nebula. This over here is in the nebula. The nebula is a thing which is difficult for me to say with my stammer, but still, the nebula nonetheless. Which is pretty much where all of our minerals are coming from. We have loads of nebula refineries now. 
Hello, Vars the Gilded. So, uh, you give us extra diplomatic rights, extra envoys, and extra trust cap. You are a governor, which is actually good, because we need a governor at the moment, so that's fine. And extra influence if you're a member of the council. Well, of course, you can join us. So, I won't be reading all of their events this time around, because, spoiler, I see a lot of them in the upcoming full playthrough. So, Vars the Gilded, there you go. You're now in charge of this, and... You are pretty high level, and you're not giving any bonuses, so ta-da! Ah, oh, it is a shame, though, because these don't get the special bonus at level 8. Which is some really good bonuses to do with Empire size, normally. But still, for now, extra trust cap, more envoys, even more trust cap, and more influence. I mean, people are gonna love us. Also, I'm gonna launch this early to give more experience to all of our glorious people. Now, normally I'll go straight with this, but actually, I want you to be really good with the fleets you're currently in. So, you know what? Give me more damage. You are an aggressor. And now I probably just want more unity, am I right? We do have- we come in peace, but we don't, so unity, please. A lot of our scientists are now reaching level 5, sorry, level 4, which means I'm going to give most of them Explorer. This will give them extra survey speed, anomaly research speed, etc. And when they survey anything, they give you 5 unity. And now we have lots of them. Oh yeah, this governor isn't currently doing anything. So, scientist, governor. Okay, so I will need at least one governor to eventually take the role of a member of the council. So, getting you champion of the people is fine. Oh, you already have both of them. Okay, for now, then extra food. Later on, I'll start leveling up your champion of the people since it's already locked in. Oh, well, that's a shame. I rushed over here, spent all my influence, so I had another way of expanding, and then there's the Watchers there, so that was a waste of, like, 400 influence. Thankfully, we're gaining loads of influence at the moment. Not only do we have our fantastic leaders, one of which has deep connections, the other one... Oh, so two times deep connections, so that's loads of extra influence. We also have our vassal here giving us a little bit extra, and, of course, we are fanatic authoritarian. Lots and lots of influence bonuses. We are kind of being boxed in regardless of that, though, no matter how hard I try to get out of this. Ooh, there's a guy over there. We can't fight that just yet, but still. On the upside as well, we are now getting auto cannons, which are going to make our fleets look far scarier than they really are. And as soon as I level up Prosperity, I'm probably going to go to war with the Confederation to weaken them and steal their people. We have around about 10k fleet power already, and that's just growing. Okay, now they're expanding quickly. What happened there, guys? Anyway, looks like we have a few ways we can expand, though I'm going to have to clear some aliens. Which is fine, give my lead- actually, yeah, that's a good way of getting our Admiral some more experience, who is, of course, the Minister of Defense. Ooh, yep, launching that early, thank you. So, even more influence? Uh, rarely a bad thing, but honestly, extra trade value would be so good of this empire. Or even extra unity, both of these I want desperately. So I'm definitely going to be able to get that later. Once you have it, you almost always get them offered again later on, same with Xenolinguist. Uh, I think for now, our economy's looking good, let's go with extra unity. There we go. Extra counselor. Lead again. Okay, one of our scientists leveled up. Extra sublight speed. Great. I want to survey everything. I mean, we could just go to war now with our neighbor. Get them early. I mean, that's again, that's the biggest bonus of this empire. Our early economy is fantastic. It allows us to be hyper-aggressive if we so desire. And of course, we're trying to be hyper-aggressive. So, I think we should probably go with that, take advantage of that, and go to war as soon as I reinforce my fleet a little bit more. I don't really know how strong they are. We are plenty strong, but again, I know basically nothing about them except for I can't vassalize them. Meanwhile, on the home world, 28 years in, and we are producing 28.2 food per population. Yeah, so our governor managed to get agricultural focus. And that's why I love the new leveling up system with them, because you get to choose things, and you can really make things weird. You're being bombarded by... a riding fleet? Who sent a ri- Oh, you didn't accept the demands, did you? That's what happened. I'm not strong enough to deal with the riding fleet to protect my, my vassal right now, so they're just gonna have to take that, which is a real shame. I almost never pick this, because influence matters more to me, plus um, the sprawling slums basically means one free population for just a little bit of energy. So not free, but still, you get the idea. I... Wait, is that two more order empires next to each other? Anyway, I'm gonna go with this one, though. I really want the extra unity. So yes, please. 
Gaia and... Okay, so these are the two Gaia worlds for the um, Fallen Empire. That's fine. My fleet's now moving out. We're going to go to war to impose our ideology on our neighbors as soon as possible. Okay, Alpine worlds are going to be available to us very, very soon because now we can go here. Oh, yeah. We're not allowing surrender because, well, we're bombarding them to steal their population. If they just surrender, we're not going to be able to uh, quickly grab all their people. So, the idea currently is deal with this, then clear out the aliens here so we can start expanding that way, and then clear out... Oh, no, I can't clear out these aliens. No, your positioning is dreadful. Well, I guess I could clear out this one here, the Void Cloud. That would at least give us maybe the ability to slip through. And it would give us an arid world, which isn't great right now, maybe in the future. Oh, we're actually getting stuck. Yeah, I'm really hoping expanding here is going to be nice and easy. We grow ever stronger. Lovely, lovely early aggression. Okay, so... They're psychics! That was loud and my microphone yelled at me for that, but they are psychics. Oh, that is beautiful, isn't it? Uh, Savannah to... Do we have no cold worlds? We have one alpine world that... That is stupid. Really? Still, psychics. Psychics very good. Ah, we have a little, um, pre-sapient mushroom people. So, the one... Oh, broken union. We're gonna get brain slugs. Lovely, you just wanna slug in their brain. Okay, so glory to the yurks. Anyway... Um, what we're doing right now is making loads of agricultural districts because trying to get enough jobs for all our new people is actually very difficult, so... What are you good at, anyway? You're decent leaders and sociologists. Okay, but you just don't breed very quickly. So, we are going to grab one Alpine world. There's also a random Gaia world here, by the way, with City of Bones. I don't really know what that is, but... I'm sure it's safe to land on the City of Bones world, the Ultimate Gaia world, the sitting there completely free of people. Yeah, so I think we, we really need to start getting some tech now. We're doing fine for alloys and everything else, our economy is going to bounce back in a second once we have more jobs available, and this war is basically over. Not only have we completely emptied their home world, I mean, look at this thing. Yep, two people left, and all this upkeep which is going to hurt them. We are also... Just not really finding any more fleets. They had a 5k fleet early on, but then a 2k was defending as well. Obviously, we just brushed them both aside, and now we're just having free reign. Once we take all this, and our ground forces land, they'll give up, and they'll become our ideology. Glory to more fishers. And then later on, we'll either vassalize them, or make a federation with them. There we go. Sol 10 is now ours. Oh, it's size 25. Why do I think it was 30? Um, send in our new brain slug hosts. Slug phobia is so horrible. Minus 20 stability, and it's for 20 years. Even if you do what I've done, and you force the brain slug on all of your population, slug phobia still exists, even though everyone has a slug in their brain. Which means the slugs are slug phobic. That's just silly. If I was a slug, I'd probably love slugs. You see, I say that. Knowing full well, I actually have a pet slug in real life. Yes, Lathrix has a pet slug, because of course he has a pet sodding slug. He has pet giant land snails, and a pet tortoise, and geckos, and snakes, and everything else under the sun. So of course he has one pet slug. Intellectual booty. He's called Yerk. Vast the Gilded has become widely known for their lavish feasts, containing exotic food and drink, as well as philosophical and ethical discussions. Here, friendships are formed, business deals are struck, and old grievances are forgiven. Her ability to unite such disparate individuals lays a solid foundation for our future prosperity. Population united modifier added, plus two stability, plus four percent happiness. Is that as permanent? Just... Wow, so even if we lose her as a leader somehow. Also, yeah, uh, our, our head of state is actually kind of awful now. Passive times two. Council agenda speed, minus 20%. Yes, yeah, so a lot of our unity is now going to have to go into making these happen early, otherwise we're just not going to get them. Oh, that's interesting. So psychic leaders gain... Oh. Yeah, psychic leaders just passively gain research. For the Empire. Interesting. Now, this will put us over the uh, maximum, but I do need some more scientists because there's so much to explore.
Ooh, and... Ooh, our glorious spy leader. Well, that's good. But we don't really want a general leader, that's the thing. So I'm actually not going to accept her into the fold. This is the first time I've ever declined one of these. With them currently losing their war versus both their neighbours, we are free to just enter their territory with nothing to stop us. And of course, start taking some of their populations. We will then of course conquer the world afterwards, because we are trying to make them into a tributary. Likely we won't get everything because of their hyper war they're in. I won't be able to grab everything, but if we just make a small tributary here, at least we'll get some extra influence, some extra money, and all that other good stuff. Ooh. Lots more things. So many archaeology sites I've just been ignoring for some reason. Really need to get on that very, very soon. I'm currently doing just one at a time. Okay, current plans. Our economy is looking great. It just really is looking fantastic. The war with the regime is going well. I mean, they are at war on three fronts, so of course it's going well. Over here, the syndicate is warring with the foundation, which is really good for us. What we're going to do is as soon as this war's over, we're going to attack the syndicate. But rather than trying to make them a vassal or anything like that, because they can still put down their branch offices if you do that, which is just so annoying, we're going to change their ideology. We're going to change it into us, which means they're no longer a mega corporation. They'll become an imperial. And by being imperial, they can't be a criminal organization anymore. So it just simply breaks their civic. So here's how it's looking right now. 50 years in, we control a good chunk of the galaxy. Most are because of vassalization. The one we changed the, ideolo the ideology of joined us willingly. In fact, they asked us, so it didn't even cost influence. Yay for that. We're going to be attacking the Syndicate in just a moment once I've healed up my forces, and we have a potential ally with the Imperium. The Imperium here really like us. They also control the Foundation and a few others, which means, yeah, another vassal group we could turn into a super federation, which would then dominate about half of the galaxy, and our economy is looking as good as ever. Ah, the bestest good guy. Now, I actually know all about this guy because uh, a bit of a mini spoiler in the full playthrough coming out. I may have found him as well. He's lovely in every horrible way. My lord, your honor, O oh supreme ruler, I, Kalar Minder, am but your humble servant. Your word shall be my command. Let me take charge of your planets, and I will bring you glory and wealth. Oh, so much wealth. Yeah, come on, then you can join us. Look at that. Worker output plus 50%. Have fun at the capital. So let's see what's happened now. Now we have old Minder there. 49 food per month. Will that go up after the end of the month? Or is that where it is? It is, yep, 49.2 food every single month. I actually thought that would be a little bit higher. I guess... Oh no, our old leader already had Agricultural Focus 2. And of course, that also reduced the happiness. So that's not actually that much of a huge deal. Purely because... Our last leader was very, very good. I'm going to keep them there anyway. So, where do I put the new super governor? Uh, where's the next agri world going to be? It may be this ocean world. It's going to be one of the oceans. I don't know which of the oceans is going to be the main new... Fo oh, this one, obviously. Yeah, this is the one we're going to... Because this has more food stuff, which doesn't actually matter all that much. Okay, yeah, you can definitely go here instead. Yeah, the difference was minuscule, purely because our governor was already very good with food, so definitely better putting him elsewhere. Okay, so we have a leader here with Geological Consultant 2. Every cleared blocker gives nine months of unity production. It really does, they went from 8,000 to 18,000. That's very niche, and once you're done, you're kind of... Only really getting that benefit if you keep on moving them around, which I guess you could do. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of unity. Actually, that's a ton of unity. So that's all I have to do then. Um, yeah, every time they're complete, move this leader, Veltaz, to another to another world with loads of blockers on. Each time a blocker gets removed. Wow, we're gonna rocket through all of our all of our um, traditions. Then I might wait. I might wait a little bit longer because currently I am trying to set up a few more of our um, unification centers, and then eight months will be worth way more. Yeah. Now, honestly, at this point, 
If I was playing this to go all the way until the very end game to fight the crisis, etc., I wouldn't go down the psychic route with this build. But I am really curious to see what psychic does to our leaders once we get full psionic. So I am going to go with mind over matter, and then we are going to go down the route of psionics. Council agenda available. So now our main species not only has a slug in their brain, but I'm assuming it's the slug itself which is psychic. Another empire is currently warring with the Syndicate, so we are also going to war with them now. I wanted to go a little bit lighter, but I can't really see what else I can do here. So, what type of war? War of beliefs, and okay, this we do not want to allow to happen. If the Overlordship War goes through, they become a vassal of someone else, we can't attack them easily. We need a full victory here, so that the entire empire changes what it believes. So we need to be quick. We need to go in and just rush everything, especially in this area, which is closest to them. And hopefully we can just about make it. So this is interesting. All available leaders get the psychic trait, but the ones I already have haven't become psychic. Only new leaders now have the psychic trait. I was hoping they would all get that. Surely that's what should have happened then. That's what used to happen. A little bit concerning there. Research. I've also gone with Hydrocentric. This will make all that terraforming cheaper. It also means I can expand our worlds by using the Expand Planetary Sea. So to do this, what we need is the ice mines. I've got one of them up somewhere. Essentially, it's just these. I can't remember which one has it. The ice mining station. This will allow us to either flood habitats or extend our oceans. Making the world bigger. Meanwhile, our governor with the geological consultant trait it now has rank 3. So every time one of those is cleared, we get 18 months worth of unity. Hence why I've just finished off uh, psionics already. Just to show you how new I am still to this DLC, I did not realise that Domination has two new really good things to do with it. First of all, Governor experience gain plus 20%. Governors are arguably the most powerful leaders in the game now. Then, Privy Council, Councillor experience gain, all of them including your Grand Overlord plus 20% experience gain. So if you have Governors in the Council, that's a plus 40% if they do indeed stack. And even if they don't stack, I don't care. It's still really good. Domination. Gonna start using that a lot earlier now. We've removed a blocker. I'm getting 30,000 unity every time I clear any blocker with this governor here. And I have loads of worlds with blockers still. That is a really, really good trait. I never would have rated highly until I actually thought about it for more than five seconds, which is a rare thing for me to do. Just for the sheer fun of it, I decided to go with the Eater of Worlds. Since the first time we were offered, it was the Composer of Strands, and although that is great, you know, pop growth, etc. I want to see what the main building is like if we go with the Eater of Worlds, and let's just hope none of our worlds are devoured in the process. Now, since loads of our worlds are now ocean, and we have lots of species which don't like ocean, what I'm going to have to do is um, make everyone love ocean. So it's very expensive, but I'm changing our insects here into ocean preference. Thankfully, actually, no, never mind, most of them are ocean preference already. Huh. Then all is well. Okay, there we go. So, does that automatically... Fantastic. So that automatically removes all of their stupid corporate holdings. There they are. They are now a monarchy, fanatic, authoritarian, pacifist. I mean, they're going to be destroyed or taken over now by their neighbours, but at least they're no longer being a nuisance to us. What we need to do is get ready to go to war with a fallen empire, really, more so than anything else. 400k, that's not as much as I expected. Oh, that's a second group but still, though. Yeah, you're going to be our target. We are now selling over 3,000 food every month. This is where it gets excessive and silly, but it's also way too much fun not to do. So, yeah, we're now producing 86.9 food every single month. Per population. If we went down the route of genetics or synths, we could have got that higher. We could power 
so many super forge worlds. Okay, if you can apply this in the long run, realistically, I still think Hydrocentric is a good option, because it's fun, it's on theme, and also works. But really, going down the route of the Arcology Project is another huge bonus here, because giant forge worlds, just, who cares about tech when you have sheer mass? Actually, can you go down the Arcology route while also doing this? Because I can't see it. Am I going crazy? Have I gone mad? Can you not have the Arcology Project if you've gone down this route? I mean, maybe that's the case. I actually don't know. I mean, in that case, you'd go down the route of Galactic Wonders and just make Super Ring Worlds with loads of forges on. Or just Forge Ocean Worlds. That's fine as well, obviously. Yeah, I can't see it. So unless I'm going crazy, maybe this locks you out of that. Interesting. Okay, the use of world just ate an entire city, apparently. Lovely. Since our last tradition tree was already finished a while back, I just spent over 100,000 finally forcing our last council spot. And we already have a general, I sorry, a governor waiting for this. Because they are a master bureaucrat. Minus 10% empire size effect. Already the empire size is hardly doing anything. And now it's going to do less. Plus they're just a super high level as well. Which means they're already going to help out a load with farmer and angler output. So what do we go with next then? Just more unity for a while so we can start upgrading our worlds. Sounds good to me. Until we can get the... Uh, I always forget what it's called. The one from Prosperity. It's my favourite one. There we are. Favoured society. That's what we'll do as soon as that unlocks. I want to get at least one level 10, please, by the end of this. We're on 6k tech now, which isn't too bad considering our very small empire size. My fleets are actually moving over here. We're going to go toward the Covenant. The Covenant isn't really a big threat to us. It's a really weak vassal. It's just been here the whole time, but we can attack it without incurring any wrath from its owners. So we're going to attack them in order to steal a lot of their populations. We'll then change them to being ocean-loving like us, just because we have a lot of worlds which are kind of half-filled. I kind of made a big mistake here. Because we are we are making synths, we should have got a load more of these ro robot assembly complexes a lot earlier. We have no real other population growth increases, and I just didn't. So our pop just kind of stagnated for a while, so that's a major mistake that's really weakened the position we're in currently. Though I still think we're in a pretty good position. Oh yeah, we're now selling 4,000 food per month. Maybe the uh, Arcology Worlds would have been a better idea. What is more forges? Oh, there we go, level 9. That's a lot of experience just gained there. And the good thing is as well, this leader is a zealot. So every time it destroys an enemy vessel, we get 6 unity. Doesn't sound like much when you're destroying hundreds at a time. It does stack up quite a lot. Um, could make zealot even more extreme. But I think I'll leave it for now and just go with wrecker rank 2. Who needs debris when you have bigger guns? More people for the farms. Champion of automation. Robot upkeep, sorry, output increased, building upkeep. Did, wow, that's really good if you're super heavy into robots, which I'm not majorly at the moment, though I don't really like any of theirs too much. I just want them to be around. I think they're also now finally out of uh, things to destroy, since that was our special leader for removing all of the um, blockers. I'm either completely out or almost completely out. Oh, there's one here, which I could do in a second. Any others? That got me so much unity. It's been absolutely fantastic. Our telepaths now produce additional navy capacity, and we can now build the Sanctum of the Eater. So what exactly does the Sanctum of the Eater do in comparison to the other Sanctums then? Also, how does it look? Brutal. It looks brutal. Ship weapon range increased, ship upkeep reduced. Oh, I really thought it was going to be additional fire rate. Maybe that would be a bit too powerful. Saying that, I mean, uh, weapon range, especially versus the endgame crisis, is glorious. So, since I wanted to go with arc emitters in uh, recent builds, especially versus the all crisis, like in the full playthrough, yeah, that's still really good. And of course, three more telepaths. It's always beautiful as well. For once, I've made sure to activate this. Capacity boosters, which increases leader experience gain and lifespan at the cost of, well, their cost. 
So that is definitely worth it there. We have loads of um, Edict Fund left, though we're about to get Ascension Theory, so that's where that's all going to go. Extra research speed would be great, or anything else which will help out our glorious leaders. Our main fleet is now over 400,000 fleet power, so soon enough we'll be able to start taking out the Fallen Empires, which will definitely give us a huge bonus. I'm also thinking that if we bribe them with tech per month, we might be able to get the nation on board as a vassal, which means all that green turns blue, or at least our type of blue, not this type of blue. And then, I don't really know what's happening with all this. I was originally, obviously, going to make a defederation, but that just didn't really happen. I've changed the thinking of the Bulwark into one more in line with us. And, if this goes through, there we go. That chunk of the galaxy has just submitted to my most benevolent oceanic rule. So that's nice. Oh, and at some point, we found someone's head. It's a relic now. So I'm getting my fleets back, and then we're going to prepare for war against the Fallen Empire. Can I do this? Yes, I can. It's very expensive, but we've got lots of unity to burn, so there we go. Oh, you're about to hit level 9, which is great, and you lot are so close to level 10. It is infuriating how close that is to 100 food. <laughs> Still, I'm if this is where we end up, I'm going to allow myself to round up and say we got to 100 food. 97.2 food per month per population. Every single population. That's just a lot of food. Now, if we went down a different route with our leader, for instance, the Instrument of Desire, we would have actually got the 100. That's why I'm going to allow myself to round up. I just went with the Sanctum of the Eater, the Eater of Worlds, for the fun of it. Though we could have easily gone with that instead. But I didn't, because I never go with this, and I wanted to have some fun. But fun apparently is stupid. Well, there we are. Our main leader is now level 10. And so is our principal catalyst, even if they don't really have many bonuses to go with, at least at level 10, which means they get the full plus 50% food from farmers and anglers, because 10 times that, which is great. How much food am I now producing then with those level ups? 104.3. Oh my god, I actually have a thousand. Well, time to go up to 5,000 food sold per month for almost no energy whatsoever, because I didn't go heavy into Forge Worlds, because I am not a very smart person. Well, I was going to end this in a more uh, fun way, but apparently I can't go to the Fallen Empire. You know why? I'm a pacifist, and I completely forgot I was a pacifist. <laughs> well, that could have gone better. Uh, well, we do enough fleet power for that anyway, so things are looking good for the Endgame Crisis if we were to stick around. We already have almost a million fleet power, and that's gaining. I'm now building a lot more in terms of forges and everything else. Our tech is doing well. It's at 11k now, and we're only getting a 21% increase in our tech cost, so our repeatables are actually going on very, very quickly. And I didn't grab that one single world. I have also grabbed all the Gaia worlds, which are around here originally, since I did find... Um, the random head. Through immense amounts of uh, research bribery, any second now will actually happen. Ta-da! More of my glorious blue. So at this point, we're, we've basically taken over over half of the galaxy. Things are looking really good, and I'm going to be calling the video there. So hopefully this proves that this build, though still not very good, is at least viable. <laughs> One day, there will be just this weird update which just does a little thing and pushes it into a more meta format. Now, definitely, I did do some things wrong. I, I honestly think maybe just not focusing on tech and unity is maybe more of the way to go. Just keep on going. Economy, forges, 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 forges. Just forges absolutely everywhere. Millions of fleet power. Maybe that's more the way to go. I went with a very balanced build, and that's why we've got a good economy-ish. A decent fleet, in fact quite a good fleet at this point, and pretty good tech, but nothing super excelling, so I didn't really tech rush, and I kind of took the vassals too early, and they're a bit weak now because of that, so they're not really feeding me anything. Seriously, I'm getting less than 1k tech total from all of my vassals, and only a little smidgen of energy. It's all coming from the fact I'm selling 7,000 food a month, that's what's keeping us currently going, so yeah, I do need to look into the fact that I... Uh, something stops me from doing the Arcology project here, and I'm not too sure what exactly it is. On the upside, we do have a couple of mega structures going as well, and it was a super, super, super fun build. 
Hopefully some of you will try it, or at least enjoy this weird attempt. So thank you so much for watching, the full playthrough will be out in the next week or two. It's a really big one and a super fun one to record, so thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows us Dolaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Now, back to recording the main video. Though this was super, super fun.